What is up guys, Andy Forest Steam Runner here and today I'm giving you my first impressions in my first run of the Nike Zoom Fly 3. So welcome everyone to this first impressions of the Nike Zoom Fly 3. This shoe for me has been highly anticipated for a while now after falling in love with the first iteration of this shoe. So today we chucked it through a baptism of fire. We took it out on our long run. We ran 15 miles in this thing. So today I'm going to give you my first thoughts, uh, impressions, the goods, the bads, um, and how I genuinely felt over the distance in this shoe. Lots more testing to do, so stay tuned for further videos on that, including a first 10k race coming up this Tuesday evening that we'll be testing this little beauty out. So if you're excited to hear my thoughts on this shoe, please do hit that like button. Do consider subscribing to the channel if you're new here, and let's dive in. Okay, so as I said in the intro, this thing has been highly anticipated for me. When Nike released that picture, um, I don't know when it was, maybe a month or so ago, of the four new iterations, the new versions of the shoes that they were going to be releasing in July, this is the one that caught my eye. Um, this is the one that I wanted to test the most out of uh, the Pegasus um, 36, the Turbo, the Next Percent and Zoom Fly 3. This is the one that I wanted to get my hands on. As I said, I fell in love with the first pair of Zoom Flies that I had back in January, ran over over 500 miles in those things they were still going strong but decided to get myself a fresh pair for the marathon I was running in April and I still only have 200 miles in those and I absolutely love them so for me this was a must-have save the pennies up get some of these bad boys and see how they felt so today for me was a similar test to exactly what I did in my first zoom flies uh, when I got those which was to give them a baptism of fire and go and take them on a long run. It's exactly what I did with the first pair as I said because I knew I was going to be marathon training in them and I needed to make sure they were going to be comfortable over the distance and from that point this thing gets a big tick because again I put my foot in it, I went out, did 15 miles today and felt absolutely great. However there are a few, few things I want to pick up on so what we're going to do today is I'm going to talk about the main structural uh, changes and design of the shoe and then at the end we'll talk about how I felt in it. There are some positives but there are some negatives so let's dive in. Okay, so I'm going to try not to make this a comparison video because I want to save that for later in the week. Um, there's a lot of things that have changed with this shoe, in my opinion, uh, that are worth highlighting. But I don't want to do this now. I want to tell you how this thing is built. All technical details are on screen because this is a non-technical review. I'm only going to give you a few bits and pieces in a very non-technical manner. So if we start from the back to the front... The flare of the heel counter. This is something that has come into play uh, in a lot of shoes recently. It's the same on the Pegasus Trail 36s. I love it. It's great. Again, it works well here. And just inside here, I'm not sure if you're going to be seeing the Vaporfly Next Percent has a heel padding counter here. This doesn't have that. This actually has them on the sides. So if I can see if I can get that in there for you, you can see there's a bit of padding in there, but you don't have that trademark shall we say a bit of heel padding that goes all the way around in the next percent as you do in these things but again nice and thin all the way around 
felt absolutely great. The big change, got to be careful with my wording, the big difference uh, for me in this is that we don't have a tongue as such, a shoe tongue that is separate. It is now all merged into one. So it's like a sock-like fit. You slip your foot in and you have this material here, which is nice and stretchy. And actually the second I saw that, I thought, oh no, I don't tend to get on with shoes that are built in that way. But, but it was fantastic. Didn't feel a thing, managed to get it tight, managed to get it great and felt fantastic. So if we move on from down here and we go down the side of the shoe, the sides, you'll notice that Nike are using this new material as they've advertised with the next percent. Some of their shoes, the vapor weave. Now this stuff is super, super lightweight. Interestingly, when I get size 13 shoes, because yes, I wear size 13 shoes, the material at the bottom here puckers quite a lot on a lot of shoes I get, and it did in the original Zoom Fly. It's not really done that in this, and if you look at a lot of people or other YouTubers' reviews of the Next Percent, you'll see that one of their comments is that a lot of this ruffles up, and they were curious as to whether that was going to have any impact. They always say it doesn't impact anything, but there is a bit of ruffling of extra material. I didn't get that with this. It doesn't do that. It's a nice, a nice amount of material that doesn't pucker and it feels great, if you, which you can't see, but if you look down through the shoe, you see tiny little dots and daylight coming through. So it's extremely thin material. And it's, again, another one of Nike's advancements in technology with upper design. So that's fantastic, felt great all the way down. And the one thing that I love, I'm so grateful they have got rid of and changed is they have got rid of the fly nicks that is holding the laces in. I really struggled. My only gripe in the Zoom Fly original version was I could never get the laces too tight and on a couple of occasions the laces came undone. Well, they clearly heard my call and other people's calls because I know I wasn't the only one thinking that. And they've introduced more traditional eyelets along here to hold the laces in, which are much better. Overall, I managed to get a nice dialed in tight fit, which felt great. If we move down, you can see, well, you can't see really, but on this tongue here, we've got Nike Zoom Fly 3, nice little touch there. Moving down to the toe box, which is nice and roomy because I have wide feet. And once again, it delivers in terms of the fit. It fits great. If we look at the outsole or if we look at the, the base of the shoe, you can see it's quite chunky. It's quite a chunky shoe. As I said, the technical details are on screen. I don't know the drop or the weight or anything like that. But all I do know is it's very chunky. And the first thing I noticed when I put my foot into this shoe is the padding in the heel. It was a completely different feel to the original zoom fly very very cushioned similar to what it feels like when I was putting my foot into the Pegasus 36 trail shoe so that was interesting I'll get on to how it feels more in a second but in terms of the design the only other uh, thing that's worth pointing out here is the bottom has changed you will have seen that in all of Nike's marketing material previous versions of the Vaporfly and the Zoom Fly had the pentagonal shapes along the bottom or hexagonal I don't know what they were and it was very flat now we have a more what feels like to me more durable outsole here uh, not so much here and a bit around the edges here which I'm guessing the engineers that made the shoe are expecting most of the wear and tear now to be fair I took this out on some buffed out fire road trails today and it gripped really well. I was actually really impressed with this and I would give this a positive tick in terms of improvement. But that in terms of the structure of the shoe and the design is it. The only extra thing to say is this massive gargantuan Nike tick all the way down the side. I am not a fan of that. I'll be honest, it is bold and garish. The first thing I saw when I saw it was, oh, why can it have been like the other shoes? So I'm not a massive fan of that, I've got to be honest. I just think it makes too big a statement, but that's personal opinion. Some of you guys will like it, some of you won't. Anyway, that's it for design. Let's dive in to how it felt. Okay, so how did this thing actually feel on the run? How did it feel when we were running? So as I said in the beginning, when I put my foot in it, I noticed a massive difference in terms of cushioning. I felt this area in the heel was a lot more spongy, wasn't quite as hard as the original version. And for me, that is not a bad thing, but I wouldn't necessarily say it's a good thing. Um, when I looked to get the original Zoom Flies, it was gonna be my racing shoe that was short, sharp, snappy, and for me to get going. I put my foot in this and felt comfort, which is great. I'm not gonna knock that, but instantly I didn't think, oh, this feels fast. So that was an interesting thought. And today I didn't really obviously give it a good test because this shoe is designed for speed, obviously for marathon training, uh, for longer distance work, but it does 
want you to put speed in it. I managed to keep the average pace over eight minute miling, uh, which was impressive because on the last <laughs> test I did with the original Zoom flies, I could not manage that. So I managed it in this one through a lot of hard work and discipline, even though it wanted me to move quicker. In terms of the overall ride of the shoe, it was a very familiar feeling, bar the cushioning, it was a very familiar feeling. Um, and I did enjoy the 15 miles and it did feel great. However, I have to say one thing and I cannot put my finger on it yet. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is exactly why this is purely a first impressions. Further testing, further reviewing to come over the next week or two. I've only tested it on a long slow run for the comfort side of things and it passed 10 out of 10. When I put my foot originally in the Nike, um, in the Nike uh, Zoom Flight original version, I was blown away and that could be to do with the fact that I was purely running in ASICs before so this was a massive step up in terms of technology in a shoe and feeling great but it blew my mind. It was another world. It felt incredible. I got the Nike Pegasus Trails recently, 36 trail shoes. Absolutely love them. I cannot get enough of them. I can't run enough in them. They are fantastic and again that feeling when I put my foot in the shoe was wow. I put my foot in this thing and I thought, okay. And there was nothing that I put my foot in this shoe that made me go, whoa, this is good. So I'm not saying that this is a bad shoe. I'm saying this is a very good shoe. I'm saying that I'm really enjoying this shoe, but there's nothing as yet that has taken my breath away with this shoe. And we will see what time brings. So this week coming up, we're gonna be racing a 10K in it. So we'll be able to test out the speed and then later in the week we'll be doing a workout in it probably on the Friday give myself a couple of days rest after that race doing a workout in it and giving it a good going over because ultimately I need to give this thing a proper test I need to do it some justice yes I haven't had that wow factor yes I feel a little bit disappointed that I didn't have that wow factor despite how excited I was and multiple times I was checking the website to try and buy this thing and I was eventually able to buy it. Um, I was a little bit disappointed that I didn't quite feel as good as I wanted to. But overall, I'm not knocking it in any way. The comfort was there from mile one to mile 15. And in terms of comfort, 10 out of 10, there's nothing wrong with it. It just didn't blow my mind. And maybe that's just because the changes in the shoe are so subtle, I don't know. The only extra thing I'm gonna say is if you hold this shoe uh, sort of like this, obviously naturally, it hangs down at the front. That's probably going to be to do with whatever's in this area of the shoe and the carbon plate. But when you hold the shoe, it feels very front end heavy. With the carbon plated shoes, obviously you want to be standing there feeling like you're about to tip off the edge of a curb. That's a, a phrase that's been going around a lot on the YouTube scene where people have been saying when they put their foot in it, they want to be feeling like they're standing on the edge of a curb and rolling off. And I get that, that's exactly how I feel. But for some reason, this area just feels a little bit heavy. So it's gonna be really interesting on Tuesday night to give it a good going over. So in terms of how it felt, guys, that is it. I have enjoyed my first run in this shoe. I'm hoping at some point I'm gonna get that breathtaking moment, but I'm not gonna hold my breath. Uh, and if you enjoyed this first impressions review, guys, please, you know what to do. Give it a like, share it with your friends, and of course, do consider subscribing to the channel for weekly running content. And I will see you next time. Until then.